lot of amazing updates have dropped in January and Feb and I am back to highlight the best ones and tell you what's new in Flutterflow. But first, let me tell you what's new in Libraries. You can now add a design system from your existing libraries. For example, if you're working on a team where all projects should follow a consistent theme style and widgets, or if you're building multiple apps with the same styling, you can now add a library as a dependency and then set it as your design system in the design system settings. So here's our e-commerce example project with its own design system. Now I'm adding the chart CN library from the marketplace as the design system and the theme will update accordingly. Note that you cannot directly edit the library's design system elements from your user project. However, if you have access to the library project, you can make changes there, publish the changes and they will reflect in all user projects once they upgrade to the next stable version. Also, check out the Shatsi and UI library on the marketplace. In addition, you can now create Firebase-powered libraries that utilize Firebase features such as Firestore. For example, here's a Firebase Analytics utility library that includes a Firestore collection to track user analytics like device info, last active time, most used features, etc. It also provides action blocks for reading, writing, and updating this collection. When I add this library to my e-commerce project, I can use its Firestore collection directly in my user project. Calling the library's action block to add user info creates a new collection in my own connected Firebase project. And the security rules for the collection are also defined in the library project, but the responsibility for deploying them is on the project using the library. Essentially, the library provides the logic, but the actual connection to Firebase happens within the user project. That's all the library updates and if you are building one yourself and it's already published on the marketplace, you can now showcase them in our Flutterflow Communities Library Showcase space so our community members can also know about it. Next in what's new in Flutterflow. We released Branching V2, a new approach to branching that uses Git under the hood. In the branching menu, you will now see two options, merge and git merge. The first one is the old method that had its shortcomings and new one is the git merge, which is the new method offering improved stability by using git's versioning system. Previously, we used a custom tool to calculate differences between branches in Flutterflow. Now, with the Git-based approach, we store a repository of YAML files that represent the project. YAML is a commonly used format for configuration files like the PubSpec YAML in every Flutter project. In branching v2, these YAML files store project properties and Git identifies differences between them to flag merge conflict. Since this is an early release, you may encounter some challenges. For example, uh, YAML formatting may be new to you, which could cause formatting issues when resolving merge conflicts. But we're improving this by adding newer features such as a new commit view that clearly highlights differences in project configuration before and after a commit, just like in Git. Now you will know exactly what changed in each commit. Want to learn more about using branching v2? Check out John's video somewhere here. We have also upgraded to Flutter 3.27, which includes various bug fixes. This update doesn't include many breaking changes and most third-party package versions will remain unchanged. However, you may need to adjust custom code to ensure compatibility. For guidance on resolving package conflicts, check out this video. Of course, we also had some smaller but impactful updates over the last two months. Here are three highlights. Previously, users couldn't add cloned or private GitHub repos as dependencies. Now you can. In the project dependencies page, simply enter a GitHub project URL in the correct format. You can also specify fields like branch name or commit preferences. 
check out our docs for more details on this. Additionally, we have also introduced a new global variable that provides the route name of the currently active page. This helps in differentiating between an active page and one running in the background. You can now conditionally allow or block actions based on the user's current page preventing any unwanted behavior from background pages. We have also made it easier to open your generated code base in VS Code. Simply click the Open in VS Code button from the developer menu to open the entire project in VS Code. Or if you're already editing a custom code file in our in-app editor, just click the VS Code icon and it will open that specific file directly in VS Code, saving you time and effort. And in other news, Check out the Flood of the University Expert training video series on our YouTube channel. This is our most comprehensive and advanced series yet, featuring over 16 hours of content created by Majid Hajian, who is a Flutter author and expert. This series covers everything you need to know to build outstanding mobile apps with Flutterflow, from the basics of app design to advanced topics like integrating custom code into your apps. You can find the link to the playlist in the description or somewhere here. And now that's all the updates I have for now and I will see you next month with more amazing feature highlights. Stay tuned and happy building!